Given the rates volatility, Akbar, and everything that we're seeing with the concerns about financial markets, does this just make emerging market assets a more difficult bet? Hi, uh, thanks for having me uh, on your show. Um, so, for now, certainly with emerging market assets, you know, uh, for the last 10 years, we've had the era of cheap money. A lot of money has moved offshore into the emerging markets looking for excess yield. I would say the fundamentals in EM corporates remain quite strong. Companies have used the last couple of years of excess cash flow to delever their balance sheets. But with higher return opportunities being offered in domestic markets, I think what we are seeing is global investors in the U.S. and Europe uh, looking at their home markets, uh, given the yields there have increased quite substantially. And that subsequently increases the hurdle for emerging market issuers, both countries, uh, sovereigns, as well as companies, to come to market. Akbar, when, it takes, when you take a look at China at the moment, do you see this more broadly as a tailwind or a headwind risk when you take a look at the risks that are still stemming from the property market, for example? Yeah, China's obviously had a very difficult last, uh, last 12 months. I would say the property market, we are observing the, the data improve subsequently uh, with uh, sort of the COVID reopening. That, that should also be a tailwind. So I would say overall, uh, it certainly should be a tailwind. And it should also be a tailwind from an asset uh, buying standpoint, given a lot of the Chinese offshore bonds tend to be purchased by captive investors that are based in Hong Kong or other parts of Asia. Julia, in fact, in our report, China was one of the biggest issuers of debt in the emerging markets. That's right. Uh, we've had a lot of uh, high-grade issuance, which is not a lot of emerging markets companies, right? Uh, but we do have uh, China, South Korea, and Saudi Arabia issuing some of the debt that we're seeing, pretty much all the debt we're seeing. Um, and Akbar, I wanted to ask you, um, something we were talking about uh, here on Bloomberg TV earlier was the Fed rate cycle, right? And that is a major, uh, could be a major help to EM issuers, no? Yeah, so uh, typically EM assets do not perform well when the Fed is uh, hiking rates. Obviously, what we've observed in the last few days uh, could potentially put a pause to some of that uh, hiking. I think when if and when the Fed does stop hiking, we should expect EM assets to perform quite well. You know, here on our team, uh, we are very opportunistic in our approach across the EM assets. We look at local markets, uh, hard currency bonds as well. Uh, we think today local, local assets screen more attractive, uh, given, you know, EM central banks were quite fast to start hiking rates, and we think they might have gotten ahead of inflation, uh, maybe even more so than developed markets. When you talk about the risks associated with secondary liquidity concerns, what are you seeing at the moment in terms of that pressure? Yeah, so the EM corporate, I'll start with the EM corp corporate debt market. Um, you know, that market in particular has been maybe one of the less liquid markets within the broader credit uh, landscape, including US and Europe. Uh, in, I think in the last, I would say, six months, we find the liquidity has gotten even worse. I would attribute this to maybe two reasons. Broadly speaking, since the financial crisis, banks have just been allocating less capital to the trading desks, and therefore their ability to kind of make markets for EM corporate bonds, which tend to be smaller in size, is, is less limited. And um, in addition, the EM corporate buyer base tends to be a bit more buy and hold like, where um, only about 15% of the bonds are held by dedicated EM corporate funds. A lot of it is held by other crossover portfolio managers, and they tend to warehouse at risk in their portfolios, and that just causes uh, you know, less turnover and the, hence less liquidity. So, so it's I almost like the, la the lack of liquidity begets more liquidity. Yeah, the vicious cycle, right? Um Akbar, for you, where are you seeing value in your portfolio and how are you really measuring jurisdiction risk as well when it comes to emerging markets? Yeah, so we, we continue to see value in the sense that, you know, the EM, the EM universe is a large, very disparate universe. We have a thousand issuers issuing from all corners of the world with, with multiple different business models. Uh, you know, our approach is to really look for good, high-quality businesses that we think generate strong cash flows, have good governance. And we think even in a tough environment, those companies should have alternate sources of financing to refinance their short-term obligations. So we're being very selective, but we, are, we do recognize that uh, sort of the next, next 12 to 24 months, the refinancing opportunities may be limited. And in that, we have to be very selective in the kinds of companies and countries we lend our money to uh, to ensure that we get paid back.